the new lead analyst for Apple TV's coverage of the MLS season. Taylor Twelman here in studio. Good to see you, sir. How Great are you? Great to see you too, my man. This, I'm excited. And not only am I excited here, we are actually have actually entitled the segment. It's amazing. It, it, hold on, wait for it. Hold on a second. It's called Rich on the Pitch. Presented by Apple TV. Do you like? Do you like the? Uh, do you, do you yeah, like the kit? I mean, I do. do you like I, the kit? What I do you love think of the, the kit? kit. I don't love the no shin guards. And next time, I would argue. I'm a little old school. I think you should tuck in your shirt. <laughs> what I get? What, I mean, so that would be a problem if I just showed up on um, the pitch um, this way. No, no, you'd be fine. That's okay. what the kids do. But I'm yes. a little older. I, I like that shirt tucked in just okay. to show your figure. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I work on it. I should show it off. Absolutely. Do you? Do you? I do. All right. I got shin guards on right now if you want to borrow them. So. <laughs> I do not plan to kick you in the shins on this program. Don't worry about that. So um, this MLS season, give me the headline going into it. What do you got for me? The headlines, Taylor? the two teams here in L.A. Um, because the L.A. Galaxy are the most storied franchise in MLS history. Mm-hmm. And yet since LAFC came into this city, this league, they've completely taken it by storm. They've won two supporter shields. Last year, they were the best team in the regular season. They won MLS Cup. They go out and sign players. Their culture, everything is about LAFC. I'm downtown today. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a single LA Galaxy banner. All I saw was LAFC. And this is the franchise, when you talk about the Galaxy, Zlatan played for, Robbie (laughs) Keane played for, David Beckham played for, Landon Donovan and yet, Rich, literally in the blink of an eye, mm-hmm. LAFC has caught the attention of not only everyone here, but around the world. It's truly one of the more remarkable stories. And I don't know if they can repeat. I don't know if they can pull it off. They may be the first team in MLS history to play about 61 games in a calendar year, which is unheard of. Mm-hmm. We've never seen that. But my God, they have just completely taken this league by storm, and that's why I'm here doing the Rose Bowl game. And I know, and again, I know the uh, LA sports scene very well, having been here for 20 years. And um, the El Trafico matches are definitely on the radar screen for an entire you know week leading up to it, right here. Rich, they've pro- played 17 times. Time. Yeah, 75 goals have been scored. That's on average it's four lit. point. Four goals a game. Everything's thrown out the door. Usually you get a 1-0, yeah. 2-1 game. When these two teams play, it, it's it's something. And this is going to be a little different tomorrow. You know, on, on Apple TV, you're going to see the Rose Bowl mm-hmm. with about 45 degrees and rain, which everyone here feels like it's the end of the world. Right. Me, on the other hand, being the Boston guy that I am, I love it. I'll play 18 holes if you want. <laughs> um, I look forward to LAFC Galaxy because they got to open up the season with mm-hmm. each other. And there are a lot of eyeballs on the Galaxy. This may be their most important season in their history. Taylor Twelman here on the Rich Eisen Show getting set to call matches uh, for MLS on Apple TV right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so um, the the LAFC and how um, – now, it or they? How do I refer to LAFC now? I'm, I, I always get confused. You could say with the, both. They? I don't, I don't know. Don't, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't overthink it. Okay, I always overthink it's it. Kind of like your shin guards. I, I, I always, but it. I always like you know whenever I if you don't talk about soccer or football. Yeah, but Rich, in a we way, need to in a stop certain this. way, you get you, there. People get really uptight. They are, but that's part of our. That's our issue. That's soccer people's issue. My 13 plus years at ESPN. Yes. I think the only thing that I had a goal of. Yes. We need more people talking about it. I don't care how you talk about it. Yes. Talk about it. And I think the younger generations now are exposed to the sport. We all are. Yes. Ten years ago, you and I couldn't watch any game of the world. We can watch any game in the world right now. Speaking of uh, Apple TV, yes. 108 countries. I Just talk. Talk the sport. Don't And anyone that comes after you, miss them because it's their loss. We got Rich Eisen Attaboy. talking about a sport. That means we've grown. I appreciate you saying that. So, uh now, one way to grow the sport is to get some big name stars, obviously, yep. involved. Ronaldo came awful close to signing in Kansas City. In Kansas by the way. City, what? What? what that would have been there? amazing. What happened there? <laughs> what do you got for me there? Um, the fact that Saudi Arabia came in and offered him two hundred and fifty million net. So they live toward the MLS, yeah. is what you're saying? <laughs> Essentially, that, that's what they're trying to do. Rich, I'm going to debunk that theory that you need global stars here, though. Got it. And the reason why is over the last eighteen months. Major League Soccer's in the top five leagues in the world selling players. Okay. Tell me more, Taylor. Now we're a conversation on the world market. Now Major League Soccer is a real conversation with scouts around the world because the younger, hungrier player is now playing in this league, Mm -hmm. not going to Mexico. 
Talk to me in three years when the World Cup comes here. Yes. Talk to me in 18 months when Copa America comes here. Rich, the only thing I'm hearing from scouts and everyone else, particularly in South America, is when I played, and I'm not that old, you didn't even think about going to Major League Soccer because that wasn't your stepping stone to get to the league. Now it is. You got legitimately serious players like Tiago Amato, mm-hmm. who won the World Cup with Messi right. in Argentina, saying, I don't want to go to Liga MX to get to Europe. I'm going to Major League Soccer. I think that's the first sign of real growth. Yes, you, Scott Van Pelt, and all the big <laughs> names in media around the world, yeah. we want... I'm not saying we don't take Messi. Right. I'm not saying you don't take Zlatan. But it's no longer the staple on how to grow the league. Does that make sense? Of course. Of course it totally makes sense. And it's all interconnected, and, and it does wind up with, I imagine, the U.S. men's national team becoming more competitive each time that they go out. You know, that they're, yep. that homegrown stars yep. can, can get what they need here with the level of competition to get better here in order to start dominating worldwide that's the most important point i totally get that so but you know when you do have me at messy though you know and you and and you do need the casual fan to be tuning into apple tv here just to go check things out and if messy shows up in miami you know for beckham then you got yourself a different story yeah that's you? completely different messi's play 2.0 we all know what play did in the nasl my father played in the nasl for 10 years i'm an nasl baby i went to cosmos games. bingo by the way, Bob Lee called those games, by the way. Did he crazy? really? The yeah. general did? I'm dating him a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, if you're listening. I, um, went, I went to those games. Amazing, you right? Know, of course. Messi will trump that times a thousand. Is it going to happen? What do you think? I think it's got a legitimate shot. I do. And I think we have to tip our cap to Jorge Moss and his family at Inter Miami mm-hmm. for going for it. Because you said it, and this is the most important thing that people need to understand of why everyone, like myself, and in Major League Soccer is excited about Apple TV for the first time in its history of 27 years, you've now got a partner that has the same ambition Mm -hmm. and resources that want to take this thing on a linear growth. If you throw Lionel Messi into that equation, the 108 countries that Apple TV is on with no blackouts, buddy, you're talking about people that wouldn't even think about Major League Soccer. So yes, Messi is the absolute trump to anything I just said because he transcends soccer. Mm -hmm. He transcends sports in in that part. So, yes, you go get Messi. I think it's a legitimate shot. I would be shocked, honestly, if he doesn't come because I know the Messi camp really wants to do this. They love Miami. They want to try it. And I can't imagine what the World Cup will be in 2026 when Argentina announces Lionel Messi as an inter-Miami player. Rich, you're going to ask me to quantify that? I don't know if I can. You can't. Mm-mm. I don't think you can. Taylor, I can't. Taylor Twelman here on the Rich Eisen Show. Rich on the Pitch is what it's being called, uh, presented by Apple TV. So um, give me the name of a player we're not talking about who who can ascend, take over. Um, Sebastian uh, Jerusi in you Austin. You didn't stutter. Nope. Tell me about him. Uh, he will do anything and everything he can to make sure you lose the game. He will do anything and everything he can. And I love it. Rich, you know me fairly well from our colleagues at ESPN. Mm-hmm. I am competitive. And I love any little... He would literally slide tackle his kids, his <laughs> wife, his mom to win that game. And then he'll do the special things. Sebastian Giussi is the front runner, in my opinion, to be MVP. Premier League teams were asking a lot of questions. He just renewed in Austin. Mm-hmm. Great atmosphere, great environment. But Jerusi is something else, and he's young, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. Okay. Anybody else? Throw out some more names. Yeah, Tiago Amato, he's the first player in MLS history mm-hmm. in his time of playing with the national team, currently in Major League Soccer, that also won a World Cup. No one else has. And Tiago Amato is the name that's brought up from every scout around the world that says, I'm interested to see what he does. Honestly, if he has a halfway decent first three or four months, mm-hmm. Rich, I'd be shocked if he's not sold. He'll be sold for real money. So which uh, which side? Right? Is that yeah. Right? You don't. You're overthinking it. Which I, team? I which side? Okay. Which franchise? Oh, well uh, If they uh, take uh, control of their own destiny and go on a run, would be most helpful? Do you think to the MLS? That's a great question. Oh man, you're really putting me on the spot. I don't mean to, but um, I, I, mean, I do. I, I do think Atlanta United. When you are announcing as one of the top five teams around the world on mm-hmm. average attendance, mm-hmm. and you miss the playoffs two of the last three years, not good enough. Mm-hmm. However, I'm going to say LAFC, and here's why. Mm-hmm. Listen, I, I've listened to you cover all the sports. What do we love? We love super teams. Mm-hmm. We love to hate them. Right. We love to root for them. We, we also love Will Ferrell. 
We do like Will Ferrell because <laughs> he can kind of take us away from it. <laughs> right. He's so, amazing. And him showing up at these matches, It too. is. It's great. Yeah. But on the other hand, if LAFC becomes the club, right. the Yankees in this league, mm-hmm. there's nothing better than to hate the New York Yankees. There's nothing better than to hate the Lakers. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I... It, my soccer brain says Atlanta United. My Apple brain, my marketing brain, everything about what this league is. If LAFC goes on this seven, eight, nine year run, it's in Los Angeles. They're doing things their way. Then I think that's the one where Apple, Major League Soccer, all looks at it and says, I love this. Well, especially since the MLS Cup was, I mean, last Buddy, year. That was one of the best games in the history I've, of any sport. I've never, I've never seen a goalie red carded while getting <laughs> carted off i've never seen that before and any i mean and I then mean, joking aside while he's in shock because he's got his leg broken I like know. honestly i've never seen anything like that and then when they red carded him for it i'm like what and the then his hell? buddy comes in the backup <laughs> and it was amazing obviously and then and then bail is gives yeah, us bail's 78 years old and he jumps like a salmon in a river and out jumps everyone and scores a goal like what it. are we talking about I here i know and then of course that he shows up against the u.s men's national team in the first yep. uh the first match yeah, the World Cup. Um, You're really good. Oh, thank you. I try to. I, you know, I. How long did it take you this morning to go through it, like the the SARS, and just go through no, the buzzwords? No, no, no. I've got. You know, I'll be honest. I've got notes. I'm a professional. I've got notes. I've got notes. Taylor Twelman here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk about you. You got a good Brady story because you, when you were doing your. Work for the New England Revolution. I mean, 2002 to 2009, you're the MVP of the 2005 season. Yeah, Bra- This is when Brady became Brady in the same building where you were doing your I stuff. I mean, I saw New Brady England. leave the Jeep Wrangler behind that he was driving after winning the first Super Bowl. And then <laughs> is that what he- all of a sudden kind of changed. I saw Brady go into the Giselle world. I was there. Right. It. Junior Seau was my next door neighbor when he was there. So I drove Junior Seau and Wes Welker to trainings at times because we were all in the same thing. I saw all the pranks, which, by the way, nobody talks about regarding that Patriots team because obviously Bill Belichick, outside the building, has this aura, right? Right. Those teams had fun. And I mean, opening a car with 10,000 ping pong balls who in did the that? middle. Who did that? Joe Andrews. Andrews, Willie McGinnis. I mean, like, when you think of uh, Andrewsy, excuse me. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you think about like that stuff, like that was like to be in there. And you were you had a front row. The seat best to this? part of the whole thing was uh-huh. I had a Jeep Wrangler my first year, and our our goalie took off my spare tire on the back of the Jeep Wrangler and rolled it into the locker room because I was late doing some media stuff. Uh-huh. And they're coming out in training camp, and I got Willie McGinnis who looks six nine. I know with, that. with the cleats on, the pads on, everything, and I see him bent over laughing his ass off because I'm sweating rolling a tire <laughs> from the locker room and then literally two days later Andrewsy puts the ping pong balls in the car like I mean it was a fun team but nobody publicly knew that because they had that or and quite honestly we were such on a smaller scale but Rich we had the same like you just would stayed in house stayed in house right but we had some fun we had many a good nights going out and for a long part of it for me um, I was part of that because I'm not really a soccer guy, even though I am. Yeah, I played all sports. I went to college on a baseball scholarship. So they weren't like, as you jokingly throughout this thing, they didn't need to apologize to me for not knowing soccer because I didn't care. Right. But then all of a sudden they started going to Revs games. And then people are talking, wait a minute, why are the Patriots going to Revs Well, games? they brought the, well, because Robert Kraft, you know. He's and, running and, the whole time, and, right, Jonathan. And, and so, but the, the Lombardi Trophy would show up to your games. Oh, right? yeah, I mean, absolutely. Well, we did that just so more fans would show up. <laughs> That's helpful. You got to fill up 65,000 seats. But hey, man, also because the Patriots are doing their thing. The Red Sox started winning at the, around that same yep. time. The Celtics won. I was just going to joke. I was looking up before to see if you beat Garnett to an MVP award, and he beat you by one year. He did. He did. He did. Yep. So, I mean, it's... We lost. We're, I'm one of, I think, three players, four players to lose four MLS Cups, Rich. So I appreciate you bringing that up. <laughs> Thank you. But you were. No, it's good. But it's you awesome. were winning. You are winning. You oh, got there. you're that guy. I yeah. am that guy. Really? Am Jim that guy. Kelly walks in here, and you're like, but you were winning. Yes. By the way, excuse, <laughs> tell him. Don't I? I call him a dynastic team all the time, the Bills. Yes, yes. And yeah, but friend, you can be a loser in a dynasty, yes. though. No. Um, I mean, you could still be a dynasty that loses. That's true. Right. I mean, it's just like, like, so just like you were? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'll own it. I'll own it. Okay. 
Taylor, real quick about the U.S. men's national team. Uh, we're not that far removed from the World Cup that just took place. Do you consider their run a success? It's a, it's a, it's a real good question. I'm not going to waste 35 minutes on it because we could talk about this in U.S. soccer, particularly in the men's side, for more than 30 minutes. We could do an entire show on it. Any time a nation gets out of their group, it's a success. Now, it's not for France, England, Brazil, Germany. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But for the United States to get out of their group, it is a success. However, you're using the word success the way I use it, the way Rich wants to. We're American. What does success mean? It means, it means doing something right, big, right. which is winning. Not scoring a couple of goals. And Not winning. scoring a couple of goals and saying, hey, we tied right. and all that. But you got out of your group. That is the base, the foundation but I've been asked multiple times, what grade would you give the U.S. men's national team? And I'm stuck between a C plus or a B because the real question has always been, okay, you get out of your group, but what do you do against Argentina, Brazil, France, Netherlands, the big countries mm -hmm. in the world? What do you do against them? Because that's the goal. If we're not doing, if that's not our goal, then quite honestly, what are we doing this for? So for me, it's a C plus because eh, if Pulisic scores in the second minute, sure. Maybe a different game, but I watched the same game everybody else did, and the Dutch ran circles around us for more than 80 minutes of the game. So it is what it is. But the World Cup coming here in three years is going to be something I, I don't know what to expect. Yeah, so that was my next question. Like, with that, what are expectations in three years? Well, you're asking me about a tournament, and we all joke, but FIFA will do anything to— It's also going to look different, right? There's going to be 48 teams now, and— Bingo. Took the words right out of my mouth. I don't know what it looks like, yeah. and we don't even know that. FIFA just knows they're going to make more money from it, so they, they win. But 48 teams, I'm like, really? I mean, the United States, Canada, and Mexico don't even have to qualify. Right. They were good. They're not going to have to qualify anyways with 32 teams. But, guys, I don't, I don't even know what the format looks like. I, it, no one knows that yet, so— uh, I think it's got to be quarterfinals to be a success if you're hosting this damn thing, and, and if not better. And because you get your golden generation that everyone, including myself, has said this is your golden generation. Well, guess what? They're in the prime of their careers. They're all playing at these unbelievable clubs where we've never seen the American. You're in your backyard. That's why the Copa America in 2024 is going to be the most important training for that team because they're going to be playing that tournament in this country, preparing for the World Cup. But if, for me, it's quarterfinals, whether it's 32 or 48 teams. Well, congrats on the new gig, man. This is going to be You're fun. You're perfect for it. They chose a perfect guy. I appreciate that. No, very, very much so. Very much so. Good, good luck with that. And, you know, whenever you're in town, let me know. Oh, yeah. And L if you want real you Brady back. stories, we can do a different kind of podcast if you want. Ah, what are we doing for dinner? Exactly? I mean, now, I mean, this is a different Rich on the pitch, don't this you This is different. <laughs> Very good. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.